So I'm about to test what this equalizing ventilator is actually doing in our house. We're gonna test the air flows, total airflow in and out, and we're gonna use that data to balance it to make sure that it's running the same. And then I'm also going to uh, check the temperatures and dew point temperatures of each one. That's basically test testing how much humidity it's actually exchanging. So to do that, we're gonna need to install test ports. This is a Testo 405i. It's a hot wire anemometer, and I'm running the app. And we're gonna take a timed average. I go all the way to the back of the duct, and then start swooping left and right, and pulling out as I hit the other side, until we get all the way out. For an eight inch duct, it doesn't take that long. And it is worth it. We have an average of 121 CFM through this eight inch round duct. This is the duct that's pulling in fresh air from outside. Now let's go to the other side. And we have about 109 on the exhaust side. So it tells us it's a little bit pressurized uh, in the house, which is not a bad thing. Some people might choose to go ahead and leave that exactly where it is. Uh, I would like to actually balance it so that there's exactly the same amount of air coming in as leaving. Now this relationship will change as the supply and the exhaust filters get clogged, which is why it's really important to continue to clean the filters. Depending on the brand that you're using, in this case, Fantech wants you to test in the duct. Some brands actually have pressure ports built into the face plate of the uh, ventilator and you would just do a simple pressure drop measurement across the core and they have given you a fan curve. No matter what you're doing, make sure that you have a tool that is a good tool to use for that. And if you're doing measurement with pressure, you might wanna have a home performance pressure gauge rather than an HVAC pressure gauge because HVAC pressure gauges run in inches of water column, home performance pressure gauges run in pascals, which are much, much smaller than inches of water. And you adjust this simply on a Fantech model uh, by dialing down the dampers right here. There are different versions of this in some uh, models. They will actually, you can change the power going to each of the fans and you can dial the fans up and down themselves. In these cases though, up to now, the standard way to do it has been just to dial down a damper to limit the fan's ability to move air. As you can see, we have 78 degree air coming in, but it's 80% relative humidity, which makes the dew point of the incoming air about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That is somewhat dangerous because inside of a home, you may have surfaces that are 72 degrees if you run the air conditioning pretty seriously. Uh, in this house, we've got dedicated dehumidification and we're able to run more of like a 76 degree set point on our thermostat. Uh, but Dew point is the metric that's most important here because when we, uh, I'm switching over to the other stream now, when we are talking about temperatures, what we really wanna know about the humidity and the temperature interaction is what happens between surfaces and air. And dew point is the measurement that is going to uh, indicate the interaction between the air temperature and humidity and the surface temperature and humidity and give you a clue about when things are going to get wet. That's the most important thing to be able to predict and prevent. So on the outgoing stream, we have 79 degree air at about 56% relative humidity and that gives us a dew point of about 62. After that air that's coming from outside has gone through the energy recovery core, it's Still 78 degrees, but now it's 63% relative humidity, which gives us a dew point of 64 degrees, which is considerably better than that 72 degree dew point. The air that's leaving the house, that's being sucked as stale air from the bathrooms, is 76 degrees, which is exactly what the set point on my thermostat is nowadays. The relative humidity is 48% and the dew point of the outgoing stale air is 55 degrees. Now that we know the total system airflow that we're running at the setting that I have the EcoTouch controller set to, 
we can compare with the design that we had. So where, for instance, we were planning on an ERV flow of 135, now I can proportionally reduce all of the individual flows that I was looking for. For example, the master toilet was going to be running 25 CFM. That could be steps down, so it's gonna be somewhere around 20, for example. And I could start to play with those. This was just adding up all of the flows that we had throughout the house. The cat litter box only needed about five CFM. It just needs a constant flow in the one direction. Toilets are a little bit higher. Showers, you wanna be a little bit higher than that et cetera, et cetera. So you can see how now you're able to, as long as you've got dampers everywhere, to adjust the dampers that are on the, the branch ducts and then the dampers that are built in at the terminals where the vents come out of the wall to make sure that all of the flows line up with what you wanted them to do, which is why you did the planning so deeply in the first place. So out of this one, since this is a bedroom, I want no more than about 20 CFM coming out of this supply. And I can see that I've got a little over 60 coming out of this. That is way too high. Now, there's two things. Number one, I am going to want to dial this down for sure. And now I know that and I know how to dial it down. I've got two dampers, one right here at the face of this and one down in the crawl space. I'm probably going to mess with the crawl spaces one first and then fine tune it with this. This is not a normal Fantech damper that you would use for this. Normally the register is gonna be these round ones that you can see all over the house. And they're shaped differently, whether they're a supply or an exhaust. But this, I wanted to be able to direct this air that was coming out, even though it was a low velocity of air, that way, because that is the bedroom over there. Because of the geometry of the uh, house here, I had to put this vent in the hallway next to the bedroom. So if I can direct it that way and then have the ceiling fans running to circulate the air, then I know that I'm gonna get good mixing in that room of both conditioned air and also the fresh air that's coming in. So here we are in the bathroom that I showed you in the beginning. This is the vent and this is what the uh, terminals that come from Fantech look like. They are dialable, so this is where the air is going into and this one is shaped so that it's uh, very easy for air to flow in. The other one is shaped for air to come out of, obviously. Now I can just close this off by spinning it this way, and I can open it up by spinning it the other way. So I have control over how much air might be going into the system. Here, frankly, the dampers that are in the crawl space are gonna be much more um, blunt uh, instruments, and I wanna use those at first and then use this to kind of refine it. So to be able to test how much air is coming through this. Put this up here. Now, right now, this is reading zero, and you can see that my little anemometer here, which is the fan blade, is not spinning at all. It's because it's such a low flow that this device can't pick it up. So I'm gonna need to switch from an anemometer um, fan blade actually measuring the flow of air, and I'm gonna need to switch over to a pressure measurement. So this is called a flow box, and I've got it hooked up to my manometer put this up in place and you can see that through my nine square inches of hole that we've got right there I'm getting about we can call it 12 CFM of flow that's great for just over a toilet 12 is all you need um, if I could have it be somewhere between 10 and 15 that was where I was aiming for I have two exhaust ports in this room. One is over the shower, which is not next to this toilet. This one has that same dialable grill on it. And we can put this up here and see that we're getting about 15 CFM. That's continuous, by the way. So that's gonna be happening 24 hours a day. If I ever decide that that's not enough, that my girls start taking more showers than baths, um, or I wanna adjust it for any other reason, then I can always come along and adjust the dampers. But in this bathroom as a whole, I'm gonna have about 25 CFM continuous of exhaust, which is all you really need. And I will guarantee you that this room is not gonna get any condensation on surfaces. You won't get fogged up mirrors. You won't get fogged up tile. It's pretty amazing when you actually put these in the right place and then adjust them so that they're moving at the right flow. So I hope that these machines, Ha <laughs>
I hope this makes clearer how you could begin to test ventilation equipment of all kinds. Uh, please do comment below if you have anything else to add about testing ventilation uh, devices. Do you have anything else to say? No. Okay. Comment, like, subscribe. Tune in next time. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.